false claims have been made saying that if either Diana Harshbarger or Blair Walsingham wins their election, they would be the first woman elected to represent Tennessee's first congressional district. That honor, however, goes to Louise Goff Reese, namesake to the Reese Museum at ETSU. She succeeded her husband in Congress after he died of lung cancer shortly after he won his 18th re election in 1960. The congressional seats are always filled by the people. Always. And she was duly elected by the people of the, of the first district. So. Uh, whether they like it or not, Louise Goff Reese is the first woman elected to Congress from the first congressional district. Coming from a prominent political family out of West Virginia, Reese took on the role of campaign manager for her husband, who remains the longest serving congressman in U.S. history. She was a, a political partner in a lot of ways. Um, you know, she was probably as well known in the first congressional district as he was, she certainly would have been one of the most well-known people in the first congressional district, even if she wasn't as well-known as Carol was. Um, one of the lessons that anyone running for office could take from Louise Reese was that she was considerate of people. Uh, she was always concerned about the region. A trailblazer for the women running for the seat she once held. Knoxville-based historian Ray Hill said she's also a feminist in many ways. As far as being a feminist, I mean, here was a woman who had a very different experience than most women of her time. I mean, she was very well educated. And, you know, so you, you could say she certainly broke a lot of barriers. If she wasn't uh, uh, a feminist uh, in today's context, uh, you could certainly make a very strong case for the fact that uh, she did not think women should be confined to traditional roles as evidenced by her own life. Reporting in Johnson City, Bianca Murray, News Channel 11.